Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. I'm back officially. So he hello to everyone out there. As always, likes, comments, and subscriptions do help out the channel immensely and are very much appreciated. There's a lot to cover. As always, a lot has been going on, and you should also expect a huge portion of the news to be uh, ridiculous is the word that I would use. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin rises by nearly 2%. Yeah, for some reason, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to find out the exact reason. Uh, prices are moving on up this morning. It says Ethereum price key indicators point to a firming case, okay, of recovery above $1,250. There was a lot of cryptocurrency price optimism as to where prices are going to be going and how high that they currently are. It says Dogecoin surges 9%. Will Doge outperform other altcoins? It usually depends on how much news is circulating around one coin. When I was looking for Dogecoin news or why Dogecoin had surged, it mainly followed around the rumors that are floating around on Twitter that at some point Elon Musk is going to be announcing or launching. And once again, this is A, not confirmed, and this is B, if it is, going to take a very long amount of time. Uh, the announcement of Twitter 2.0, the brand new Twitter that everyone was speculating about from a couple of months ago and that uh, cryptocurrencies will be integrated into the platform. This is kind of evident from the news that we got that Chang Peng Cao had invested half a billion dollars into Twitter. He kept on mentioning that he wanted to bring Web3 to Twitter and also the integration of cryptocurrency. So people are speculating as Elon Musk has probably more than likely a very large portion of Dogecoin. This is why he keeps talking about it, that he may then add that coin onto the platform first. That's once again uh, the point of the rise as far as I was able to tell. It says Polkadot clings to the $5 level despite the unforgiving bear market. There's a little bit of weird Polkadot news floating around. Uh, the one that I received from a friend that I saw a lot of other people talking about is the uh, high valuation of Polkadot as a coin. I believe the blockchain, the you know the market cap of the chain, I believe is worth six, seven, or eight billion dollars. Uh, but people from Glassnode and all the other uh, looking at chain metrics companies have basically found that on a daily basis, I think they're only doing around $800 worth of transactions, like as in, I think, transaction fees. Uh, I assumed, as I'm very and in, in quite idealistic, uh, that they just meant that their chain had such low fees that they were doing tens of thousands of transactions every day. But apparently that doesn't seem to be the case. A lot of people are finally coming to terms with the fact that there are so many coins in the market and people aren't actually using them. So when you hear that a lot of these coins are overvalued, they're usually not saying it from a place of FUD, but from a place of actual reality. It is. Can you imagine if there was a, a tech company, imagine a tech company, nothing in crypto, uh, who had an $8 billion valuation and they were only doing... 45 different contracts or transactions or payments per day. You would say, well, they seem a little bit overvalued. And that's just what's happening right now in the cryptocurrency space as well. It says crypto prices today. Dogecoin jumps 9.76%. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana bounce back as well. Bitcoin is up by 2%, somewhere roughly around there. Ethereum is almost up by 3% and the other altcoins are uh, performing as they normally would. Bitcoin never usually shoots up by 15-20% anymore. Those were the olden days, the good old days. Ethereum, when it typically goes up, altcoins tend to follow as well and tend to outperform Ethereum because it has a much higher market cap. It takes a lot more money moving around for the coin to actually move on top of that. Um, oddly enough, so we're working backwards and then moving forward. Z, uh, yesterday, stocks for some reason uh, were collapsing off of the news that the country beneath Russia, 
uh, is having a resurgence of um, Roro. And because of that, people there are not too happy and have been uh, writing on pieces of paper that they're holding above their heads as they walk through streets. You know what I'm talking about. Once again, the algorithm. Uh, For some reason, hours later, uh, stock futures are currently up on that news, and I haven't really figured out exactly why. From what I've seen looking around, it appears as if, uh, what do you call it? Uh, That country that's currently having the issue might have announced that they are going to be taking extra measures to uh, stop the paper holding and anger. And I think markets are moving up on the optimism of them actually finally doing something because they haven't really done anything in the last year. Uh, So uh, when stocks rise, you know the correlation. We are also rising as well. I've been gone for a week, and it is uh, pleasantly pleasant to see that the market has a light mind of its own, that we are no longer intertangled and as intertwined into the FTX Sam Bankman Freed saga as we were before. Of course, when looking around, this is still a major part of the news. I was a little shocked. Uh, how desperate, and I'm going to show you once again the desperation news. A thank you to everyone who like writes very nice comments and stuff like that, either here or on Twitter. I'm sorry that I can't message back every single person all the time, but thank you for the, the kind words and stuff like that. As far as someone wrote I, on Twitter, I think a day or two ago, that I was the only person like covering like what's actually happening, and I, and as far as like the the trying to get away from the the terrifying people. And even sometimes somebody was asking why I make my uh, thumbnails that way or why I make my my uh, titles this way on the video. It's you have to get attention within the space. If, if I don't tell people like these things, they won't actually click on my video. I saw that there's, there's someone else in the space. I don't like listing names uh, who has my he stole my my video format, like the format that I'm currently doing that you are currently watching. He stole it around five, six years ago, and one of his recent videos had half a million views. I clicked on it. I was like, what is he talking about? It was nothing. It was nonsense. It was something to make you as scared as humanly possible to get you to sell off your coin. So that's just how the game works now. So at the moment, prices were down a couple of hours ago. For some reason, in the last hour and a half, uh, prices have popped up off of speculation that the um, Coco Roro uh, issue may eventually be resolved. So our prices are up as well. Let's see how long that lasts. And yeah, let's move on. Also in the news, and once again, so remember two weeks ago where I told you the uh, the wave of emotions that always happen within the cryptocurrency space? It's It looks like something might be happening. Something is happening. Everyone should be terrified. Everyone sell off your coins. And then the next step is usually we hear of an accumulation phase and how much people have been buying as prices are dropping. This is where we currently are. We probably have a couple of more weeks depending on how obsessed people uh, continue to be with the FTX story. But usually the next step after this is prices moving back up and then people once again bragging at how cheap that they actually got the coins. A leading analytics firm says that two groups of Bitcoin investors have been heavily loading up following the collapse of the market. Glassnode says that people who they identify as shrimps, okay, or entities owning less than one Bitcoin have collectively accumulated over $1.55 billion worth of Bitcoin in the last couple of weeks. They said Bitcoin shrimps have added 96,200 Bitcoin to their holdings since FTX collapsed, an all-time high balance increase. A number of years ago, this was a very big discussion that a lot of people were having as to Why a large portion of the Bitcoin was actually concentrated amongst very few holders. And now we are continuously seeing that there are smaller people who are getting into the market or the the allocation of uh, Bitcoin in general, even just Satoshi's, continues to spread out amongst the community. The cohort now holds over 1.21 million Bitcoin equivalent to 6% of the circulating supply. 
And I think they also mentioned uh, who they who they call crabs. I, I wish people would stop using these words. They sound really stupid. I don't know if you know that. Uh, you know how like the term whale usually means like it generally means like someone rich, like someone super heavy, heavy handed with money that they're sloshing money around the cryptocurrency space. And then people have tried to throw in the word. It's like dolphin and then baby dolphin and then shrimps and then crabs and then like lobsters. They keep putting like different like no one's going to remember all that stuff. And please stop using it because it just sounds really, really dumb. I'm not going to refer to any of my friends or anyone who I knows as a crab. Oh, yeah, that's my crab friend. He owns over 10 Bitcoin. It sounds really dumb. Just say people who actually own over more than 10 Bitcoin. It just sounds really, really odd. Says that investors um, accumulated over $3 billion worth of Bitcoin in the past month alone. So basically, as expected, uh, prices got really low for no apparent reason. And I'm going to continue saying that over and over so that you actually understand what's been taking place. Like you were told to get rid of your coin so that richer people could buy them. Because they've been buying for a number of years and they wanted to buy it a lot cheaper because a lot of them are expecting Bitcoin at some point to go over a million dollars. And therefore, you as a normal person should not be holding any because only the rich can control money. So people have been accumulating. And that's also we had a couple of days ago, like actual like whale news, because whales have also been buying up huge portions of it as well. But this is the uh, and I and I dare air quote here, the the normal people in the markets who have also been accumulating billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin while the price continued to drop and people were taking Bitcoin off of cryptocurrency exchanges. So there's come there's there's there's, there's some kind of uh, manipulation definitely going on there. That's the people are it says aggressively accumulating Bitcoin news uh, as is always to be expected. Yeah. Let's move on. FTX has resumed payments to its employees following bankruptcy. We went over this a couple of days ago as well, but it is also very big news in the cryptocurrency space right now. It says FTX, the collapsed cryptocurrency exchange, it says to pay its employees and contractors after several weeks of uncertainty. There was no real uncertainty. The news that we had before was that Sam Bankman Free told everyone that he had to file for bankruptcy because someone else told him to file for bankruptcy. And if he had not done that in general, either the exchange would have found a way to make the money back and also part B of that as well. Remember when I told you how it was really weird that people were still able to take their money out of FTX even after we had heard that it had collapsed? And I was like, I'm pretty sure that they still have some money. And we heard sometime last week, for those of you who were not here, that FTX, I think, still had $1.6 billion on their order books because, of course, they did. They weren't completely insolvent or broke as everyone thought. They simply had to file for bankruptcy in an attempt to try and, uh, what's the word, protect the assets that they actually still did have. So I would find it really weird if the people from FTX weren't able to pay the people who are still working for them because Sam Bankman Freed, for those of you who miss it, is no longer the CEO. There's another new CEO. I forgot what the guy's name is. It doesn't really matter because probably after this, no one's ever going to be using FTX again. I swear to your actual goodness. If people are still using FTX by the end of this year or even the middle of next year, if they make some kind of a resurgence, I'm trying to choose my words lightly. It's more of a... How many times do you have to be burned to know that you shouldn't probably be using something, regardless of who the new people are who are running it? You would still use. It's kind of like, um, for those of you who missed this a thousand years ago, uh, when, uh, what's the other thing? Mount Gox was super popular. If you look into the news as to what happened, I think there were multiple um, hacks in the very beginning because we found out later on that the guy only had a computer. Not 15 computer. He had he had, he had one computer in the room, and it got hacked multiple times. That people knew that it had got hacked, but no one really paid attention to it until the ultimate actual downfall, like the actual complete collapse of Mount Gox. You know, to to where we kind of are now. And then someone tried to relaunch Mount Gox in 2015, 2016. And I was like, hey, you know what? Mount Gox can come back, and people started using it again. And I was like, you are really dumb. Like you're excessively dumb to think that you, why why would you retrust? Like there's so many other, especially now, there's so many other cryptocurrency exchanges. Why would you go back? And and even Coinbase, I think, started in 2012 or 2013. Why not just use and I, and I that, that that takes a lot for me to say. Just go use Coinbase over Mount Gox. I mean, so anyway, um, yeah, people have been able to get paid again from FTX. It makes a lot of sense. The company still had a lot of money. They have a new leadership. I assume it would not have taken more than a week to start the paychecks rolling on out again. 
This was also uh, relatively popular news as a lot of people seem to be quite confused as to how FTX would be capable of doing this. It's because, once again, you've been lied to over the last three or four weeks. You were terrified for no actual reason. That company still has money. There was also a news story here. I don't have it. That guy, Kevin O'Leary, the guy from uh, Sharkbait or whatever it's called, uh, was try apparently he just said... Uh, when he heard of FTX going down, he tried to raise $8 billion, $8 billion, $8 billion with his friends in a matter of days to save FTX, and then they filed for bankruptcy, and he was like, we can't help you anymore. That's the FTX has resumed paying its employees because they still had money. We went over that. I showed you all on the screen. That's the point of the channel to show you the news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also... This is um, the beginning of uh, meant to scare you news. We've had a lot of this over the last couple of weeks. I'm here to clarify to all of you, no, you should not be afraid because 99% of this stuff has absolutely nothing to do with you. The idea that you sold your Bitcoin, which would be an absolute travesty. Um, I saw that, uh, the, the, I think the number was that Bitcoin went by by down by 21.65% over the course of of the last couple of weeks because of the FTX thing. That is the dumbest. I mean, this 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 space only gets smarter and smarter the longer I stay inside of it. So the news today is, for those of you who haven't realized it, uh, there's another, I don't know if this is a DeFi platform, I'm not really sure what it is, called BlockFi, that is Block and then FI, has apparently filed for bankruptcy. This is the new trying to get you scared news because the news every single day has been, uh, this event has happened. Were they somehow connected to FTX? BlockFi has filed for bankruptcy after having significant exposure to bankrupt crypto exchange FTX. Once again, this has nothing to do with you. This has no reach into your life. You did not invest in BlockFi. You did not work for BlockFi. You did not work for FTX. Most of you, more than likely all of you, probably did not have your money on FTX. BlockFi filing for bankruptcy because they had exposure to FTX is not a reason for you to sell your cryptocurrency. Everyone got it? Good. BlockFi, a New Jersey, it says Jersey-based, excuse me. Digital asset lender established in 2017 has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Chapter 11, I was correct. Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code was filed in the United States Bankruptcy Court for the District of New Jersey for BlockFi and eight of its affiliate Companies, according to a press release shared on the 28th of November, with the, with the filing, BlockFi aims to stabilize its business and create a comprehensive restructuring transaction that maximizes value for all clients and other stakeholders. So apparently BlockFi had exposure to FTX, I believe, in the form of shares or something like that. We'll go over it in a couple of seconds because it's one of the it's basically the top news story of the day. Um, and I think that because and almost said NFT because because FTX uh, collapsed their exposure and they also caused their business model to collapse as well a lot of this has to do with the fact that people aren't really using these platforms regardless of or no matter how many times you hear that people are using these things or how big that they are their valuations are extremely bloated and overvalued because there were not hundreds of millions of people actually using BlockFi the same way, the way that there's not tons of people using Sushi Swap or Pancake Swap or Uniswap. We hear the same thing over and over all the time. Uh, BlockFi had very little exposure to the actual cryptocurrency market, and I saw a lot of people even mentioning before in other uh, articles because this was the thing that's that, that's happening today uh, is is to you know how shocked they were that Bitcoin's price wasn't moving down based off of the BlockFi news. It should have never moved down off of the FTX news. There was like all these companies had exposure to themselves and even more so have we gotten news that one company who was actually exposed to FTX sold off $38 billion worth of Bitcoin? No, we got no news that anyone was selling off their Bitcoin. It was that these companies were fraudulent and they all collapsed into themselves because they were all lying to each other. And then the cryptocurrency prices had to fall between 20 and 35%. That seems a little bit weird. It almost seems like some kind of manipulation is going on. It says crypto lender BlockFi sued Sam Bankman Freed for Robin Hood shares. Robin Wood. Is it, is it actually Robin Wood? I'm looking for them writing it again. Nope. People just, you know, um, typos all over the place. Over the past few weeks, a lot of catastrophic events have taken place because everyone was told to be terrified. FTX fallout, yada, yada, yada. While the crypto lending platform BlockFi 
requested bankruptcy protection on Monday due to a severe liquidity crisis because probably nobody was using them and they only had a little bit of money and they assumed that the corrupt cryptocurrency exchange FTX was going to save them and or have more money for them in the event of something happening with an FTX crash. So just seems logical. In addition, only hours after the bankruptcy request, BlockFi sued FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried to claim control of Robinhood shares that Sam Bankman-Fried reportedly committed as collateral just days prior to... Okay, this makes a lot of sense. So it looks like... In the, I'm, I'm just alleging here, but this makes a lot of sense. It looks like BlockFi um, filed for bankruptcy because they were probably actually bankrupt. And then at the same exact time, they were like, okay, we need to find a way to get money. And they found it that on their order books, they had given money to or had invested money in FTX because of whatever the case might have been. And now they're trying to get that money back to save uh, their backsides. That makes a lot more sense. This one says, another crypto major BlockFi goes bankrupt. I can't believe it. That's so crazy. And I, and I hope that a lot more of these companies uh, continue to get washed out. I do not like the idea of people losing their jobs. I don't like the idea of people having to get severance pay because the company that they were in was fraudulent and or broke and or didn't have people actually using their platform. But it's just one of the things that keeps happening within the cryptocurrency space. My hope is that. After all of these fiascos and everyone losing their minds and going insane and, you know, not being able to believe that the cryptocurrency space was capable of some type of thing like this, I, I do hope that the next companies actually get it together. I hope that they save money when we're actually having <coughs> a bull run because how many companies have collapsed in the last six or seven months saying that they simply didn't have any money? You got to save money when things are going up. That's how things work. When, when prices go up, you don't buy fancy new things. You invest in things that continue to give you money. That is, um, and I would even dare say that is financial advice. Yes, yeah, you heard it here first. When the, when the cryptocurrency market begins to skyrocket once again, when we get to an $85,000 Bitcoin, when Ethereum is hovering around $8,300, when XRP is back above $4.25.5, Please don't buy a Lambo. Please don't buy a new diamond necklace for your girlfriend. I just saw some TV show and I wanted to completely vomit. Uh, I was watching it with a friend and there was something about people getting married and this guy was like, oh yeah, I'm going to buy my girlfriend a ring. This guy also didn't have a lot of money. I think he took out a loan and he bought like a $30,000 diamond ring and I was like, she would she would be totally fine with a $500 ring. If, if she's not fine with a $500 ring while you are trying to get your life together financially, she's not the one for you. The point is, just make sure that when the market does go back up, that you are actually investing in things that will continue to give you income. Because, why can anyone tell me why? Someone said it. Because the cryptocurrency market will eventually go back down. We will be in this situation once again for over a two and a half year period. Prices are down and everyone's super miserable. You know how to not be miserable is you take some money out of the market and you, 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 you buy a home or you buy an investment property or you invest in something else that gives you money every single month. It's quite simple. So yeah, BlockFi has uh, filed for bankruptcy. Everyone's completely shocked. They can't believe that all of this is going on. This was also tying directly into that news as well. And this isn't even a thing. <clears throat> for those of you not looking at the screen, it says this just in. FTX Alameda Research Contagion could spread to these banks. Once again, I want you to keep all that all of you keep it in mind uh, that the news that we've been going over for the last couple of minutes is called I'm trying to scare you news. I'm showing you all the news that's been in the news in the last couple of hours. That's basically meant to terrify you uh, to being in the space. The idea of the contagion, the idea of FTX spreading to other things that are out there in the cryptocurrency space and how it might be bad for you, your wallet and your money. It's a lie. None of that actually makes a lot of sense. And even more so, the 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 banks that the FTX contagion could spread to, where are the names of them? These are cryptocurrency banks. These are banks that aren't even real banks, if you want to air quote it that way. Uh, these are digital online banks that no one's actually using. These are the banks that were acquired by people in the cryptocurrency space and or created by people who wanted to get more money into crypto as a way to have an extra layer of protection for people in crypto to be able to have a bank account. We went over that a couple of years ago. The idea is that normal banks, normal banks, did not want to use or help people within the cryptocurrency space. So people within crypto began to accumulate and or acquire their own banks. It's not that difficult to buy a bank, especially an online bank. You can even create one, some of them. Cost around half a million dollars. You just have to acquire a company that already has the banking charters and the paperwork. And if they have no business, you can acquire them relatively cheap. 
So the banks that this contagion could hit are cryptocurrency banks, which people already aren't using, and many of them even have less than a billion dollars worth of assets at any given time. So yes, the FTX contagion could spread to those banks, but those banks aren't relevant. Those banks do, are not Bitcoin. They are not running the Bitcoin blockchain, and your coins and money are safe. Every single day, the news is constantly uh, meant to terrify you. And I'm not sure who's writing these articles or who's working with who, but it is very weird. Uh, this is this is one of the most intense times of me being in the space that I'm seeing uh, that there is an active effort uh, to get like I mean other times we've seen before if some if if X event happened the 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 terror goes on for about three or four days of scaring people this has been weeks that people have been trying to get other people to be really terrified over what's happening and I told you weeks ago something was wrong something is weird don't fall for it so for those of you who did not fall for it uh, congratulations you win a prize you get to stay in the market I I, I don't know what the prize is supposed to be there also in the news, which is also quite popular, as is usually in the news, which is actually kind of weird. It says over 90% of Australians have heard about Bitcoin based on a survey. 25.6% of the Aussies are apparently holders of crypto. And 90% of people in Australia have knowledge about Bitcoin. The reason why this shouldn't be news and should never actually be news unless we get actual proper numbers is that when a lot of these surveys actually end up happening, they usually find a very small segment of people, typically anywhere between 500 to 3,000 people, and they're meant to be the voice of what's happening uh, for said particular topic, i.e., it was a couple of years ago in the States, I remember they were, they were doing polls and surveys about something, and they were saying that this person was clearly going to have a, a more of a lead in the polls you know, or the voting, whatever, uh, during the actual election. And then you looked deeper into where the survey was taken. It was taken in one state, in one county, in one town where people were already going to be voting for that person. So, of course, the numbers were swinging in that favor. I do not believe, hear me out here, I'm going to roughly assume that there are over, roughly assume that there are over 10, 15, or 20 million people in Australia. We can also probably assume that they did not find a way to get 20 million people to take part into this survey. So it's probably less than a couple thousand people, even more so. I couldn't find a number anywhere. That's the crazy part. We had that number before. It was something about, what was it? This was months ago. Something about like New Yorkers and, and how much crypto they hold. And I I think the estimate was one out of every three people has crypto. And I'm like, did you just talk to people down on Wall Street? Like where, like where exactly were you discussing this with people? I don't understand how that's supposed to even be a thing. So yeah, these surveys keep popping up, and, and I think it's meant to make us believe that there are huge amounts of people actually in crypto. I do not live in Australia. Surprise. Um, if you live in Australia, can you tell me, uh, is it one out of every, does one out of every four people that you know own crypto? And not including yourself. Like, count like 12 of your friends. Do 25% of them hold crypto? Is it more than that? I would also even include your fa and your, your your family into that because I always find that anyway. That's the apparently ninety percent of Australians have heard about Bitcoin. If they haven't, I would I would actually find that kind of weird. I find uh, knowing about a coin or anything a lot more reasonable than actually holding the coin. Like, have you heard of hamburgers? I'm pretty sure you have. Have you heard of NFTs? More than likely. Like, ask people have they heard of NFTs? They probably heard the letters connected before, but they probably may not own an actual NFT or maybe even cryptocurrencies. A lot of people don't even believe in our space. A lot of people keep hearing all this news about FTX and over the last couple of years about how bad and terrible it is. There are tons of people who want nothing to do with crypto. I mean, I don't think they're the most intelligent people, but that's just kind of where we currently are in the market. People will get into our market the higher prices go. This is just how it always is every single time. So when we pass by a $100,000 Bitcoin, this is when all the masses will begin to rush into our market because they will realize that they want a piece of that $100,000 Bitcoin when they could have had it for a lot cheaper. And that's just kind of how um, things uh, go. Yeah, that's the, I don't know, weird popular news that's going on. Let's move on. Also in meant to scare you news, it says on-chain data, Bitcoin miner capitulation continues. More pain ahead for BTC. 
The general idea is, and we can sweep right over this one, the idea is that when uh, we see people plugging in their cryptocurrency mining machines, and we saw just last week <coughs> that Bitcoin's hash rate hit a brand new all-time high. It is typically because people believe that Bitcoin is going to go higher. However, if people are unplugging their computers or whatever, it generally sometimes means that they believe that Bitcoin's price is going to go lower and or it's not profitable for them because you can actually check mathematically and see how much it costs to create a Bitcoin. If you see that it costs $10,000 for you to create a Bitcoin and Bitcoin's price is at $16,000 and therefore it is monetarily advantageous for you to actually take this on. The idea of minor capitulation has to do with the idea of people who are mining these coins having to pay their bills and therefore, they're selling off some of their Bitcoin. So the idea is that there are certain mining companies who are mining Bitcoin who have begun to sell off portions of their Bitcoin because they have to pay the bills. This happens all the time. However, the first paragraph says, amid the collapse of FTX, there's massive selling pressure seen for Bitcoin. Uh, no, people who are mining Bitcoin are not selling their Bitcoin because they're terrified of a 90-foot-tall Sam Bankman-Fried crushing their operation. They're selling it because they always sell it. This happens all the time. It's just that we see it more so because Bitcoin's price is low. We can see exactly which wallets that they have and which they own because many of them are actually quite transparent. So they let you know exactly how much Bitcoin that they have created and usually how much they're going to be selling off. They're selling it because they have to pay the bills. The electricity that they are using is not free. Many of them are hooked up to governmental electricity whatevers. And usually their their monthly bills end up, surprise, being millions of dollars because they have 30,000 machines connected inside of a warehouse. Yeah, also meant to scare you. And super popular news as well, which I was, I'm not, not really shocked at it. We knew that this was also going to be happening. One of the world's largest financial service organizations, Fidelity, has officially started opening retail Bitcoin and retail Ether trading accounts. Earlier this month, like I said, we already heard about it. The company announced its move into crypto market and launched an early access list. Users on the list have received an email stating the wait is over, yay, which further details the launch of its crypto trading services. Users will need a Fidelity brokerage account to fund their new crypto account. The platform promises commission fee free, there we go, trading of Bitcoin and Ether, and users can freely trade amounts as low as a dollar. Wow, how generous of them. Users on the wait list were also asked to read and accept a number of disclosure agreements, as is to be expected. Why was that even written there? Of course they had to do that. How do you think you sound? Anyway, these agreements included the standard crypto risk assessment, cautioning users of the volatile risks of the market compared to the traditional asset class. And here's the tweet for it right here. So cool. We heard around 2018 that Fidelity, one of the largest anythings on the planet was getting into the cryptocurrency space they announced in 2019 that they would be opening up cryptocurrency trading but it was only for the richy riches of the world as is normally expected many of these companies in the cryptocurrency space or who get into the cryptocurrency space believe that they are going to make the most amount of money simply from a large amount of people who have a, a large amount of money and and nothing else no other actual desire to be in the cryptocurrency space what ends up happening is is that a lot of times these platforms don't end up getting used. Remember Bakht? Yeah, Bakht is B-A-K-K-T. It is from the New York Stock Exchange. No one's using it because they, like many other anything, had announced that they were going to be launching something in the cryptocurrency space and they didn't need normal people. So they only wanted rich people on their platform. And now you see their trading volume. There were days before, you can even Google this, maybe even a year ago, uh, Bakht, once again, B-A-K-K-T. People were looking at their, their I think, trading volume, and I think one day it was actually zero dollars, like not a fake zero. That's not like me. Like it was Z-E-R-O, like z zero, like there's no one using this platform. So I assume Fidelity is doing this because normally you would hear that a, a major player or someone who's trying to be a major player in the cryptocurrency space would typically launch something like this during a, a, a bull market. Like when they see there's an indication that Bitcoin's at 25,000, we are in bull market territory, prices will begin to move back up. This is when they typically launch it to get everyone to be like, yeah, let's go into cryptocurrencies and let's use Fidelity. But they're launching it during the course of a, a and, I, and I dare not say bear market because this was not organically induced. This was definitely orchestrated. 
Um, they're launching it while prices are down, which is very interesting, which means that they're trying to desperately get people now uh, who are simply looking for a new place to trade and maybe might see the Fidelity name and therefore they end up trusting them as well. So very popular news. This could indicate that we will begin seeing a, a rush of people getting into the cryptocurrency space. I think many people who want to get into crypto are usually, what's the word? Um, the word's not corralled. Uh, usually, if you have a friend who wants to get into crypto, you're more than likely to be like, oh, download Coinbase or go to Kraken or use Binance as opposed to being like, oh, Fidelity's brand new in this space. You should use them. That's kind of what I mean. So it might take them some time to get there. And I won't even wish them good luck. Good luck. Good luck. They, they're, they're worth hundreds of billions of dollars. I'm pretty sure they'll be fine with or without crypto. Them getting into crypto is basically trying to take money from normal everyday people who are getting into the space to put into their own pockets because that's what it always is. This is the reason why they're worth hundreds of billions. It's not because they're donating to people in need. That's the Fidelity is launching uh, crypto trading for, for normal people. Wow, bless them. Thank you so much for allowing us to get into the space that we've been into for the last 14 years. It's very, very nice. All right. And then move on. Also in the news, and this is, and I'll tell you something uh, big here. Once again, for those of you not looking at the screen, it says the number of smart contracts deployed on Cardano grew 100% year to date. This sounds good, but wait, hold, hold on a second. The number of smart contracts deployed on the Cardano network has grown by more than 300% year to date. As the cryptocurrency network keeps on growing despite the ongoing bear market. Fantastic. According to data from Cardano Blockchain Insights, as Finpol, Finbold has reported, there were 974 smart contracts on Cardano at the beginning of the year. That figure has now surged to 3,790 at the time of writing. So, uh, one, the, car, the, 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 the Cardano uh, network is getting more usage for their smart contracts. Two, if you dissect the numbers, this actually isn't that amazing. And I know someone just just smashed their keyboard or got really angry or has steam coming out of their ears. This this equates to just ten smart contracts a day on the on the on the blockchain. <clears throat> yeah, see when you when you actually put it that way. Um, so we we've seen over the course of the last couple of years <coughs> that Cardano is definitely getting more usage, but much like Solana and many other chains, a lot of times you'll hear that these coins are doing X. So, they, you know, it, there is more usage actually happening on it, but it's more of a, this news was floating around as that Cardano has received hundreds of times more smart contracts than they did before, but that's how it's supposed to happen. You're supposed to have more people continuously using your chain. And once again, if you take the, the numbers, it comes down to around 10 to 10.5 to 11 smart contracts uh, per day, like the entire day. Uh, normally, if you look at Ethereum, there are thousands of smart contracts constantly being deployed for a, 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 a plethora of different things. So it's not that the news is bad. It's just more of a a lot of times the, the Cardano news ends up being uh, 11 smart contracts have happened per day over the course of the year. Or Charles Hoskinson is mad at someone, which was also news. I don't have it here. It was very, very weird. Charles Hoskinson was angry at someone, again, for saying something negative about Cardano, and he didn't like it, so he made another two-hour YouTube video. I don't understand why he does it. Like, he, I, I, I feel like he's so rich that he should be doing so many other things. If it, I don't know how much money Hoskinson has, but if I had Hoskinson money, I'd probably just be on a beach somewhere writing more smart contracts. I don't know. So yeah, Cardano's blockchain usage is up. Their, their Plutus uh, smart contract platform is also getting more people, but it's 11 smart contracts a day. So when we get to like 800 per day, um, maybe during the bull run, that is a lot more like, whoa, there's tons of... Because I would also want to see how much money is floating through Cardano per day. Like as far as uh, we know that every month Bitcoin is transacting over a trillion dollars on the blockchain, that kind of news. Does anyone know? Can anyone give me the number? If you, if you can do it on Twitter, because it gets lost here. I have so many, I have hundreds of comments under these videos sometimes. And people like give me like pertinent information. They're like, dude, I wrote it in your comment section. I'm like, I I'm not scrolling through 900 comments to find, uh, one particular thing about one, uh, topic. So because people, I, I was also asking people before, like how many, I think it was Cardano. Was it Solana? I don't remember. Someone was mad at me. 
I, w I was asking how many transactions per second a chain had, and people were like, "Well, it doesn't work that way." And I was like, "Well, how does it work?" And they were and, and no, it was Cardano. I can I, I can see the messages floating in my mind where someone was like, "Well, you can batch transactions into one transaction, so there may be like 500 transactions inside of one transaction." I'm like, "Well, that's wonderful. Can you give me the information for those 500 transactions? Like, how much money is flowing through this chain every single day?" I mean, it's it's also you know the the market's down, so I I'm not expecting hundreds of billions of dollars every single day but i like these numbers like it shows me like the the strength of these these uh coins or the blockchains or how much more money i should put into them it's usually usage and how low the price is if i can look at the usage and say whoa that's a lot of you know that's a huge amount of people using it per day but then i can also be like oh snap the coins like 12 cents let me go buy some more at least that's usually how it works out for my portfolio that's the cardano smart contract plutus is doing uh, has now had 3,790 contracts over the course of the year. It's better than zero. That's a uh, that's just the truth. Yeah. Let's move on. Also, in this was also meant to scare you because that's all that the news is now. So, for those of you who don't know, um, all the time, all the time, and 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 I give them a a light golf clap. Because they're the, the one of the first exchanges who began to do this and also like the one of the relatively more transparent ones. Um, every single time that Binance moves money, they, they tell the community. They're not like hiding it. They're not trying to, you know, shy people away from the fact uh, that they're moving money around. But every time that they move money, they, they, they tweet about it because people get terrified for no reason all the time. And... It's them tweeting that something has happened, which usually stops the fear, which is quite nice. Um, however, people don't know how money or blockchain or the internet works. So this is where we are. Binance moved over $2 billion worth of Bitcoin as part of a proof of reserves audit. So remember a couple of weeks ago, we heard that FTX was the worst thing on the entire planet. And the only way to get away from FTX is for every single cryptocurrency exchange to let everyone else know how much money that they have. So Binance has been an active part of this because I still feel like something very fishy is going on. And part of it is uh, being able to show how much money that you have. So you say, I have X amount of money. And then someone goes, cool, can you move X amount of money to other place so we can see that it's actually you initiating the actual movement? And Binance said, sure, we'll do that to prove exactly how much Bitcoin that we have. However, people are very dumb in the cryptocurrency space, and this is, this is currently where we are. It says some crypto enthusiasts feared the worst after Binance moved 127,351 Bitcoin to an unknown wallet. It was all part of an audit. And you know how it was part of an audit? Can you guess how? Guess. It's super easy. Yeah, they tweeted about it. All the time. So you can even see on the charts uh, when the news happened that Binance moved money and before people realized that it was actually Binance instead of just, you know, going to look as opposed to being completely terrified over nothing. Uh, people began to sell off their coins because they, they thought that there was simply 127,000 Bitcoin on the move. And even if there was, cool. What's the problem? Everyone's totally for decentralization and everyone has monetary sovereignty and everyone can use their own money. But the moment when people do actually use or move their money in the cryptocurrency space, it terrifies the bejesus out of them. Every single time. There was something last week that we were going over. Someone moved, what was it? Like, was it $10 million worth of Ether? And the news for the next hour was someone selling their Ether. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. If you want a world where cryptocurrencies have taken over and, and Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and Solana and Luna, you know, these are all, you know, the, the money of the future. If we get to a point where, where Bitcoin is worth a million dollars, let's say 15 to 20 years, I don't know the time frame. who cares, and someone moves 18,000 of their own Bitcoin, why would you be afraid? The point is, it's, it's their money, let them move it. And even more so, why would you have been afraid of that? That someone was moving, is, is, is the entire space that fragile that people can't move their own coins? Do you expect people to sit on their Bitcoin forever until you become wealthy and you are no longer afraid of their movements? People aren't allowed to move their money in this space. That's why whenever we have a whale alert, I'm like, this is complete nonsense. For those of you who don't know what a whale alert is, it's either the news of the day or usually ends up being on, on, on Twitter as well, where they basically 
uh, show someone who's moving their coins. There's $100 million worth of Bitcoin on the move. Why are you writing that? What's, what's the point of that? Saying that someone is, if I had $3 billion worth of Bitcoin, I think I would just mess with the market on purpose at this point. I would literally just move my money back and forth just to terrify people. Why is it that easy? Why does no one ever look into anything? Why is there no, and it's not even faith. It's simply just logic. So the news was uh, Binance uh, reported that they were moving their coins. Um, people were terrified because no one looked into it and everyone just keeps getting scared. And we, and, we, and we know these wallets. Binance has told us many times before exactly what their cold wallets look like. We know how much coins they have in their cold storage. Some crypto enthusiasts feared the worst. If you feared the worst, leave the market right now. Like, leave. If that news scared you, you should not, I'm telling you, you should not be in crypto. If the news that someone else moves their own money terrifies you, you should be, you should be on the edge of your seat every single time that there's an auction at Sotheby's or Christie's. Because pe people are buying art that's like $100 million. So when they move that art, they're going to collapse the art market if it... If they sell that one piece, that's how it works, right? If if there's some, you know, if there's a celebrity selling their twenty six million dollar mansion, they're they're going to collapse the entire real estate market. What do you what are you going to do? Yeah, see how stupid that sounds. Yeah, that's the exact same thing. The news the last uh, couple of days has weeks has been absolutely, I mean, mwah, I mean, just completely phenomenal. It's a load of actual garbage when it comes to the amount of effort people are putting in to try and terrify people. I have not scrolled down on this article. I would not be surprised. I, I have not seen the rest of it. All I needed to see was this part, and, and I knew exactly what was going on, and I found the tweet immediately. I would not be surprised if somewhere in this article, the letters FTX were somewhere. I would not be surprised. I, I'm not going to scroll down because I know that they're there. <laughs> I know that it's meant for people to read it and become terrified and to think that this FTX thing is, is, is continuously still going on. FTX has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your life. You are never going to meet Sam Bankman-Fried. 99% of you did not have your money on FTX. You were not exposed to and do not work for and did not have any money in BlockFi. You didn't work for Alameda. So what, what's left to be afraid of exactly? Anyone? Oh, no one. All right, cool. That's the Binance moved money and, and people got scared news. Oh, ooh. I, I think that was supposed to be a ghost. I'm not sure what that was, but that's the Binance news. Let's move on. Let's also move on from the letters FTX. As always... A very big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Martin Steuer, Bodie McBoatface, Sam Ratter, Dotha Diddy, Many Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, The Dealer's Den, Captain Something in the Z-Way, Lay, Mo Barazi, VB Nerd 21, Lauren DeSilva, Quoted Biddy, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pat Ternoster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Bibliophobia, Adam Grasig, Wise 9, Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Setsuna, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Anytime Fitness, Mong's Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho Nisa, and on Crypto with Lionel. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. I do thank thee. Hello, I'm waving. You can't see me, but I am waving. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, has subscribed, who left 1337, or who is trying to help out the algorithm. I do thank thee very much. At the memento, Bitcoin is currently up by 1.7%. It is at 16000 491 US dollars. Ethereum is up by 3.5%. Binance coin is up by three as well. XRP is up by two. Dogecoin is up by eight. You can see exactly when the news came out that the stock futures were up. We went wee and went all the way up here and we are currently trending sideways, which lets me know that the stock market is doing the exact same thing. Cardano is up by 1.99%. Matic is up by two. OKB is up by two. Litecoin is up by six. No Litecoin news, and there hasn't been in a while except for the Mimble Wimble thing. 
But every single day, Litecoin, relatively every single day, Litecoin keeps going up. No real reasoning as to why, but, you know, bless them. Solana's up by 2%. Uniswap is up by 4 Chainlink is up by 4 Wait, Nope, 9% as well. Ethereum Classic is up by 3 Cosmos is up by 4 Anything insane? Algorand is up by 4 as well. ApeCoin is up by 7%. Um, I forgot what's going on with ApeCoin or like the entire board Ape Yuga Club's other world uh, metaverse kind of thing. Near Protocol is up by five. Oh, did everyone see the VVverse thing? P- people were asking me what I thought about it, and I, and I listen. I, I can't remember to to, to respond to, to everything. It's it's just so many messages all the time. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I I'll be honest with you. I was expecting uh, poo poo garbage. Like I I I was expecting like. Whoa, I can't wait till that's done in about two or three years, but it looked good. I mean, it didn't look absolutely terrible. I assume that there will be constant updates over the course of the years, and it will get a lot smoother as well. Um, what I didn't know and I couldn't find the information about anywhere is, is, is that block of land given to everyone? Or do you have to like pay for that allocation of land uh, through the VV app using Omi. I, I tried, que- you know, I, I was writing questions, but I, no one could give me the actual answer. Like I saw that it was like an hour and a half video of what the um, metaverse looks like, but I was like, okay, how do we, how do we get one? Because I know that, like, like when you, you know, I'm rambling on here. Like when you look at the actual VV vault, like we were gifted the vault, like we have a vault to put our stuff inside of, but like, do we also get gifted the land or do we have to pay for the land? Is there a news on how much the land is going to cost? It is, a, is it a certain amount of OMI? Is it an ether? Is there like a US dollar price that we kind of have to match in gems? I couldn't find this information anywhere because regardless, I'm going to get one. And I, and seeing that you could actually even like live stream videos there, I'm probably, listen, I'm probably going to invite all of you. We're going to have a lot of days and times in there just talking nonsense. It's, I'm, I'm definitely going to get one. Or, you know, if you have to buy it, I'm getting one. It seems very, very cool. Um, Near Protocol is up by 5%. Huobi Token is up by 9% as well. X-Chain is up by 5 Nothing too crazy. Everyone's in the green, which is very nice to see. Yeah, all right, cool. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.